Hey everyone, this is Dr. Baron Grutter here. Uh, I'm making a quick update video on how I trim my models uh, for Blue Sky Plan Ortho. So um, the other video is I'm going to leave them posted and I'm going to try my best to kind of direct people to this view as the, the most current way to do this. Um, then, but I'm going to leave the other videos up simply because they do have some other uh, comments, some explanation that I um, I think are is still relevant to keep up. So anyway, um, one of the, the kind of things that, that's cool about having hands-on courses is we bring people in, we get people together, we start talking about techniques and whatnot, and next thing you know, someone in the class uh, points something out that I have personally never realized, and we're collaborating. We're actually uh, you know, growing together. Um, so last weekend, I was teaching a course in my office, and um, there was one of the course attendees. He's actually a fourth-year dental student by the name of Calvin Eastwood. Uh, he mentioned to me that he had actually been practicing in anticipation of the course and noticed that he was able to cut the models in the orthodontic module. Now, previously, I've, I've, t I've shown how to do that in the surgical guide software. You then export them and bring them back into ortho. It works, but it is um, an extra step, and um, you know it, we want to cut down any sort of extra work whenever possible. So we, tr we looked at it, and we couldn't honestly figure out how he had done it because it wasn't repeatable for me. But the more we talked about it, we figured out what the trick was. Um, and anyway, it's now the, my go-to method. Um, before this, I was still cutting my models mostly in mesh mixer simply because I'm fairly adept at using mesh, mi mesh mixer. I, t I teach how to do it in Blue Sky Plan so that you don't have to rely on two different softwares. I use mesh mixer so much that, well, it's just so easy for me to use it. Well, now that this is possible right in the ortho module, I honestly don't even bother with mesh mixer. I simply take my scan straight into ortho and work from there. So let me show you how this works. Um, you've already seen this step of opening a case, but I'm going to kind of repeat that if you're, if you're watching the tutorials. But we've clicked on a uh, new project. Uh, we're going to go ahead and click on the maxillary arch first. It is, I believe it's important to start with the maxilla, and you'll see in a minute why. You can bring in the mandible first, but again, just don't. Bring in the maxilla first. Now bring in the opposing. Okay, so we've got our two models. Now, the reason, I'll tell you right now, why it's good to start with the maxilla is we're going to trim it up. But if I had the whole palette visible, sometimes cutting that can be a little bit difficult with the lower arch in the way, especially if there's a bunch of data from the floor of the mouth or whatnot. It could be obstructing my view. It usually, it's probably not a big deal because I can just tip, tip it back this way. But if there's one arch that I want to be able to get the other model out of the way, it's the upper. So I can click to hide. The problem is when I go to trim the lower, I cannot hide the upper arch. So that's my point. Is that In this phase, I will later when we're actually treating the ortho, but at this very initial step, I can't hide the upper. I can only hide the lower. So that's why I believe it's, it's important that your primary arch of treatment, the first one you bring in, is the upper. All right. So to do this, there's a little trick here. Now the software is designed so that if I press the shift button, you'll see my cursor tur my turn to a crosshair. The arrow turns to a crosshair. Okay, so normally when we cut, we hold the shift button, we draw our line, and we get done, and we let go of the mouse button. But nothing's happened. So you're thinking, well, this doesn't work. Here's the trick. If you press the shift button, draw your line, and at any point during the drawing, I'm holding the mouse button. If I let go of the shift button, I've let go right now, you can't see me let go, but I've let go, and now let go of the mouse, it does the cut, okay? So let me repeat. So long as you let go of the shift button prior, I've let it go of it right now, I'm still using my mouse, I'm walking around, the shift button is released, it will cut. Okay, so I can come around. I've shown methods on how to do sort of a plain cut. That's one of the reasons I'm leaving that other video up. Once in a while while I'm doing this, I'll come through here and I'll let go and it doesn't disappear. I'm like, ah, dang it. Let go of the shift button first. So once you get in the hang of it, you'll see that it's very, and I did it again. And this one's just not liking that drawing. Okay, so one other thing that I, I mentioned but I didn't give an explanation for in the other video is that um, what I, I kind of alluded to. If you're drawing a line and say you draw an, oh shoot, I accidentally got this, so long as the line doubles back on itself, 
if I let go, the software doesn't know what's the inside and what's the outside. So I've got this, oh shoot, I hit the teeth. If I just double back, it's so the lines intersect each other, it doesn't know what to cut, so it just doesn't cut. So I can do this plane cut that I described where I come through here, make a straight line. If I like it, cool, I let go, oops, and I actually, I didn't let go of the shift button. But if I like, if I don't like it, I can just uh, double back or let go of the shift, let go. And this method is pretty predictable, but it's not 100%. Okay, so anyway, you get the point. So now I've trimmed the upper, it's good to go. Um, I can go ahead and show the opposing. I can do that plane cut that I've shown before. Let go of the shift. And it's a big area it's cutting, so it's going to take longer for it to calculate you know, what needs to be discarded and what needs to be left remaining. So once it's done, you'll see a bunch off the lingual that's been cut, a little bit off the buckle, because this extent of the scan isn't nearly as far as it is in the lingual. And there we go. So a lot's been trimmed away. I can come back in here. The lingual the, you know, is pretty well cut through here. I don't need to mess with that. I could come in here. There's this little extraneous data right here. And lasso that in, let go of the shift. Now let go of the mouse. If you have an issue where it's not cutting, that is most likely what you're doing wrong. This is still only a week old technique to me, so I certainly um, kind of mess that up from times, from time to time still. All right, and if you wanted to trim this even more, uh, we certainly could. All right, and there we go. So these are trimmed up, and now I don't need to bother exporting them. I can bring them right into the ortho module. I am ready to go. Anyway, so patient, name the patient and just move forward. Okay? So anyway, hopefully this video is helpful. Uh, save you some time from having to do it all in surgical guides, export, and then re-import. Uh, in the future, we'll, you know, we'll have some even better tools for trimming these and cleaning them up. Um, and uh, so maybe a little bit of automation. Uh, hint, hint. Um, but at the same time, for now, uh, go ahead and just do your trimming and cutting right in the ortho module. Save yourself some time. All right, hope this helps. We'll talk to you soon.